I saw this stat that you can hold your breath underwater for four minutes and your deepest dives were 104 feet free diving underwater. Is that true? And how are you able to do this? Okay, A, it's true. Yes, I think my longest static breath hold. So there's a static breath hold where you're not, uh, you're not kicking. And that is just over, I think my longest one was about four minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, it is not comfortable. Will not say, will not recommend it. <laughs> but okay. uh, it is something that a lot more people can do than than they really think. Um, a lot of it is in your mind, and I think that's like my favorite part of free diving is learning the science, learning the techniques. But the vast majority of it is your own relationship with your mind. Wow. Because the breath is so important. Even it's like the key to like regulating your body. It's a key to like meditation, spirituality, everything. There's so many like breathing exercises. So I imagine that learning how to get to that point was a journey and it, and what did you learn from that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Just to echo what you said, I, I totally agree that the breath is this immensely powerful tool that I think a lot of us are only just starting to tap into now with breath work, with meditation, with more intentional breathing practices. And free diving was the first time that someone really talked to me a lot about what was happening in my body when I'm breathing. And and not only that, but what's happening in my body when I'm breathing or when I'm holding my breath, which is such a it's such a foreign thing. It's, it's yeah. like, it's quite scary in a lot of ways. Cause it's just so not what we're designed to do in many exactly. ways. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I have taken quite a few classes on free diving where they do, you know, dive into like, what is the science in your body? How long can you, you know, safely hold your breath for? What are the different symptoms of, becoming what's called hypoxic, which is, um, you know, when it gets a little bit more dangerous because your oxygen levels are low. Um, so it starts with a basis of, of knowledge, but really what that journey of learning to hold my breath, um, has, I think taught me is this measure of a being able to find calm in situations that feel challenging or situations that feel slightly out of control because the the first thing you know when you're free diving your biggest challenge I guess I would say is actually that you want to lower your heart rate so the more calm you can be the more at ease you can be the better your dive will feel the better your breath hold will be uh, but there's there is this part of our brain that wants to keep us safe, you know? And so as you're taking that breath at the surface, knowing, okay, I'm attempting to go down to a hundred something feet, um, it, your, your adrenaline starts going and everything starts tightening up and constricting and spiking. And you have to learn in those moments how to almost like talk to yourself and, and create like, like let go of that muscle tension and not be holding all this like stress or anxiety about your dive because that only hinders your performance. Yeah. So one finding calm in these moments that feel a little bit more challenging or chaotic has been a huge, huge thing in life and being able to take my free diving breath practice, I guess, and apply that to when I'm just sitting here in my house and getting a little bit nervous or stressed out about something. And then the second part that I really love is I think breath holding teaches you an immense amount of self-trust. And a lot of us these days, I think don't completely trust ourselves or don't completely know ourselves. And in free diving, like no one else can tell you how you're feeling no one else can tell you how long you can hold your breath for they are not in your experience they're not in your body knowing what you know so a lot of these classes have taught me like how to recognize my own symptoms how to recognize what is you know what is something I can push through and what is something that is a signal to pay you know pay more attention to and maybe back off a little bit but 
you really have to find that parameter within yourself because no one can do it for you. So it's been an immense journey of learning how to trust my own body, trust my own mind, and to be able to only with my own, you know, with me empowering myself basically to be able to push through certain barriers.